We're going to be talking, of course, about Port Douglas. But uh, before we do, I'm sure some of you were here yesterday, so I will just briefly introduce myself to any new people. My name is Mary Atkin at Land Around Them. And of course, they probably didn't realise, so you know, probably a few axe heads would have done very nicely for them. You can have the whole lot made if you, if you care to. But it cost him six pounds uh, actual money at that time, and he put that six pounds down, and then he was going to pay the remaining 234 pounds once this was all together. So what did he do? He got on the first ship, he went back to France, and he set up a company called the Nanto Bordelais Company. And with that company, he ceded his interest uh, in the Banks Peninsula to the company. And the company went out and they tried to sell, um, obviously, the opportunity for a French colony down in the South Island of New Zealand. Uh, he got 59 immigrants, and uh, six of whom were German. Uh, he approached the government, they were very interested, and King Louis Philippe was very interested. You know, anything where they could beat the English hands down was definitely on. And so King Louis, he actually supplied an escort ship to the Comte de Paris, uh, which took all of the 59 immigrants to New Zealand. So what was happening back in England, you can imagine the English were getting <coughs> very worried about it all. And so they rushed out William Hobson, and he had something like two weeks in which to author or co-author the Treaty of Waitangi. Already a lot of work had been done by a fellow called James Busby to get the Maori chieftains to sign the uh, treaty. And in uh, February 1840, the treaty was signed. It was a done deal. Now, the English knew that the French had well, got this plan going on down in the South Island, and immediately Hobson, he um, got the, I think it was a French, uh, sorry, an English warship called the Britomart, 